Yeah, you're always awake to the thousand other possibilities where, you know, the directions that a scene can go in. You, know? you are? <laughs> you mean, have thousand? Yeah. I have three. Oh, no, no, no. You have to make a thousand choices every uh -huh. night before, okay. before you going to bed. Set. That's the rule. Oh. Yeah. I am very excited to chat with you both for this show. Uh, I'm only about halfway through the season, but from what I've seen so far, it is fantastic. Uh, what? Uh, I'll start with Gustav and then Luke. What about the project really sparked both of your interests to want to be a part of it? The script and and of course the whole the whole story. You know, it, for me, it's always interesting uh, about seeing. You know the little person trying to fight you know, the big institutions or the opinion or whatever. You know, a whistleblower story. I think it's it's something you need to see for people to to to. You can relate to that. And me, of course, being from Sweden, so I I knew everything. You know, I was there when all this happened. I actually been at the the same hospital, so I could relate one hundred percent to this material. Yeah, I, I I was compelled by the story. You know, I, I was really compelled by the Benita Macchiarini uh, interaction just because of its sort of, you know, uh, juicy nature. Um, but I felt like our sort of our arc kind of ballasted the show in principle and, and sort of sh showed more of the kind of um, direct moral quandary that, you know, that people, medical practitioners can have in the face of, you know, a creep like Macchiarini. Yes, it really is quite the uh, harrowing journey that you two embark on throughout this show. Um, but at the same time, I actually really love the friendship dynamic that you two uh, enjoy in the early episodes. And I'm curious what that was like for both of you, you know, really finding that rapport and that dynamic with one another uh, during rehearsals and before filming before we're both here. we're both very well trained and so we just you know we know how to diplomatic make it training, yes yeah. we're very diplomatic but, yeah. uh uh we uh, uh <laughs> what <I> hope so <laughs> <laughs> yeah we uh it it was very nice actually it just sort of uh felt seamless to fall into that relationship yeah. you know our, our first day on set was at the bar and I was screaming, he was soccer, screaming was like cursing. a maniac, and and you. What I got did to. You think? I got to be the the rash, the voice of reason. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. No, just I so, actually, you know. I I think you ha you you have a friend that is a friend of mine. Oh yeah. So I heard. Uh, uh, and she said, well, oh, Luke Kirby, he's a great actor and he's really funny. You know, he is, uh, what do you call it? Uh, he, he, he will surprise you and improvise. And, you know, so I felt I, I was secure and comfortable. You were given a, a, a warning. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. A, a good warning yeah. I, that you, this, this is a guy you can have fun with. And it's, you know. It was true. It was. <laughs> well, it's true. <laughs> I love that. So even though this is a dramatic show, though, then, Luke, I mean, did you find yourself ad-libbing uh, at all throughout this show or did you stay pretty close to the page? Here and there. I mean, you know, when things kind of get loose and people, it, it sort of you can see it spark an interest in, in, in the director. But for the most part, we really were sticking to the script as written. And quite frankly, the scripts were so well written that it was, you know, really a joy to to say those words i mean that i w was always remarking at work how kind of nimbly we were able to sort of find our way into the language you know sometimes medical stuff can become overly dense and mm. you know sort of uh, subsumed under the jargon and the uh, you know all the uh, medicalese and, and and for whatever reason i i it didn't feel that way uh you know, with Ashley Michael's words and all of her great writers, it just felt very um, sort of seamless. I'm now noticing that we're both wearing black. Yeah, yeah. We, and I, I have no idea what you just said with all no. the English words, but it, it sounded so good. I agree. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah. But I think, you know, you, you always improvise, even though you don't do it with the words. So, so yeah. it's, you know. Yeah, you're always awake to the thousand other possibilities where you know the directions that a scene can go in. You, know? you are. <laughs> you mean, have thousand. Yeah, I have three. Oh no, no, no! You have to make a thousand choices every uh -huh. night before. Okay. 
before right, going to bed. That. That's the rule. Oh, yeah. Well, how else now do you know for the future? Those nightmares. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, well, I, one of the things that I find so fascinating about both of your characters is, I mean, Luke, your character stays pretty skeptical of Edgar's throughout the show. But Gustav, you go on this really interesting journey of believing in him to the, and having to realize the secrecy he's holding. What is something that you found you really connected with in that arc that really helped you embody this character? Of course, I can relate to that. That I'm, I'm, I'm shocked <laughs> for the question. No, no but you know, uh, I, that's that's what you want to do. You want to have a character that's making a, some kind of journey, and and I, I think the three of us, even uh, Ashley's character, we 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 have three different you know points of views of being a whistleblower. You know, of course, I have family. You know, I have kids, so I, I could connect to this Anders. He has this wife and she stepped down from her legal career because we have the son with special needs. You know, I have three daughters and with everything around that. So I could really relate to that. You know, people depend on you. And in, in Anders' case, he, you know, he, there's a lot of things at stake if he, if, he wants to become this whistleblower, you know, not only for him, but because, you know, because also his child and his wife. So I, you know, I could really relate to that dilemma. Well, you you bring it to life uh, beautifully throughout this show. And uh, Luke, I'll throw a similar question to you. I mean, what what was an, an aspect of your character that you found you connect to the most uh, while embodying? You know, his kind of dubious nature was sort of, you know, a little familiar. Um, uh, I mean, his, you know, his being dubious about others, not him being a dubious guy. Uh, that comes later. Uh, I, you know, his, Gamelli's experience with his sister was relatable. I mean, I, you know, I, I that is uh, something that I kind of, have experienced in my own life and kind of, you know, the, the immediate need when, you know, when someone needs help that quickly and the concern that comes with that and the exhaustion that comes with that. And, uh, you know, and, and the fact that it doesn't always work out. I mean, that, you know, that was certainly, uh, you know, a a good, a good uh, in for me. Um, and just the, you know, the, the medical practice sort of the, 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 the tightrope that it has to walk and how, you know, it, it, you know, one has to be their own advocate and, and, uh, and yeah, that, that was familiar to me. Going off of that, I actually particularly loved, uh, the, the arc that you have with the Christopher Lyles character and his family. And I'm curious what that was like for you on those specific days, you know, the one where you interact with the family for the autopsy and then the one where you're playing the card game with him. What was it like going into those days with sort of that own personal experience in mind? It felt like just another day at the job in some ways, which I think is what it feels like for doctors. You know, they, they, this is their profession. And, and, uh, and as it, you know, I, you know, I, I kind of went in there seeing how, how uh, me and Chris would get along and hope for the best. And it was really, you know, it was a lot of fun. You could kind of see these two guys starting to find simpatico and, you know, develop a little friendship. And then to have it sort of, you know, to have him disappear like that is a, is, is a cruel, a cruel blow, you know, to Gamelli for sure. Yeah, I can't even imagine being a doctor, uh, and you have to deal with that yeah. every day. Uh, no, you really would have to. You'd have, you know, <laughs> your your boundaries must have to be very specific. It's got to be a a real. Uh, yeah, you put it in yeah. different boxes. Yeah, Compart- compartmentalize. Ah, Com- uh, compartmentalize. Neither of us are especially good at that. Epithelium, <laughs> epithelium in animals. I can say that. You know, that was the challenge for me, the, all the difficult medical language. Yeah. I used well, to call it, how do you pronounce this? <laughs> say well, you, both, you both yeah. tackled the challenge well. Uh, I, I cannot wait to finish the season and to see how both and of your you stories should. play out. Yeah, so yeah. thank you. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to chat. I greatly appreciate it. 